Hello, my name is Annelise Desmar and I'm Senior Curator of Sculpture and Decorative Arts here at the Jepol Getty Museum. I do specialize in sculpture of the 17th and 18th centuries, mostly in Italy and France. Uh, but of course, thanks to uh, the fantastic collection that we have here at the Getty, I happen to work on many different artists of many different centuries. But um, now we will be uh, focusing on one of our masterpieces, a uh, fantastic uh, bust created by John Lorenzo Bernini, whom uh, I guess everyone knows because mm. he was truly the most important sculptor of uh, <laughs> all the centuries, I would yeah. say, and uh, a genius. He's uh, often called uh, mm. like that, you know. And he was not only a sculptor, but also a painter, an architect. Uh, um, he was truly uh, a genius. <laughs> That's the best way to summarize this uh, artist. Um, this bust is uh, truly uh, very particular for many reasons. Well, first, we thought it was lost in art history sometimes, mm. of course, when you deal with uh, uh, works of art from uh, past centuries. Uh, these uh, are pieces. Uh, had to go through many different steps in their life and sometimes they get lost. Um, this uh, burst that in, uh, from the time it was created up to the end of the 19th century was in the Borghese uh, collection, but mm. in the 19th century the Borghese family had financial issues, so they organized some sales and this um, uh, piece had been, we think, uh, bought by a Viennese collector but from the moment in which we, um, uh, we had that sale in uh, 1893 uh, until two years ago, we didn't know where the bust was, and we knew wow. it only thanks to a photograph in black and white in that catalog. Uh, so just to give you, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of the history of the rediscovery of this bust, so it's really uh, a major acquisition that uh, the Getty uh, has done. It's also very particular because it was created by Bernini when he was only 22, 23 years old. Mm. So you can imagine that was uh, quite uh, important for, for such a young artist to create oh, yeah. a portrait of a pope. Uh, the pope represented in uh, this uh, bust is Pope Paul V Borghese. But when uh, Bernini got the commission, the Pope was already dead. The commission was made by the Cardinal nephew, the Cardinal Scipione Borghese, mm. uh, six months after his uncle, the Pope, had, his uncle, the Pope, had died. Okay. Uh, Pope Paul V died in January 1621, and uh, the uh, commission for the, the bust we know that thanks to uh, archival material in the Vatican, uh, all the Borghese contability is kept there, and thanks to a payment, we know that it's only uh, in June of 1621 that um, uh, Bernini was uh, starting his work. And why? Most likely because uh, Scipione Borghese, who had already commissioned many important artworks from Bernini, but not a portrait, uh, may have gotten a little bit envious uh, about the new pope, um, Gregory XV, Ludovisi, mm. who, as soon as he was elected, got his portrait carved uh -huh, by Bernini. Okay. So it's a little bit of, mystery, of a mystery for us uh, specialists of Bernini. We don't understand why the Borghese family, so important as patrons for Bernini in his early uh, 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 career, never thought of commissioning a portrait of the Pope and also of the Cardinal right. when the Pope was alive. So the portrait of the Pope, as I said, six months after the death of the Pope, and the Cardinal himself asked Bernini to portray him later, only 10 years later, in, the, in 1632. Mm. So anyway, but we can't explain uh, uh, why. So you have uh, here precisely the second uh, bust of a pope that Bernini created. The bust of Gregory the Fifteenth is uh, still to be rediscovered. Um, the uh, composition that Bernini um, uh, created is actually quite traditional. We have that uh, already in the Renaissance. 
meaning the way in which he would uh, figure the Pope uh, is with uh, this kind of uh, hairstyle, where there is very uh, little hair. Um, it is called the uh, tonsura di San Pietro. Okay. So you would actually, uh, you know, cut very uh, uh, a lot your hair, and you would keep just this little fringe. border. So that's the tonsura di San Pietro of Saint Peter. And then the Pope is uh, wearing a very uh, heavy cope, the piviale. Uh, which was a kind of mantle that not only the Pope would wear, actually also uh, you know, cardinals or bishops for very important ceremonies, but you can understand that this uh, piviale, this uh, mantle, is of the Pope because it is decorated by two figures, uh, Saint Peter, that you can recognize by the keys he's holding in his hand, mm -hmm. and then on the other part, Saint Paul, that you can recognize with the sword, and that's his martyrdom is was uh, beheaded uh, with uh, a sword. Um, and Saint Peter and Saint Paul are the uh, princes of the apostles and the saint patrons of the city of Rome. Mm. So uh, uh, that's also the reason why they would have been represented on the mantle of the uh, uh, Pope. And paired together, they're, they're really sort of the symbols of papal authority. Exactly, exactly. Um, and what is uh, truly uh, astonishing in this bust is, of course, the way in which Bernini was able to get so many different textures on the surface of his marble. So you can see some polished area here. Here, instead, it looks like, I don't know how to define that, like sponge. Yeah. But you know, you have to imagine that more or less he's trying to recreate in marble something which was in fabric. You know, it would have been, perhaps that is imita imitating velvet. Mm -hmm. While all the, these decorative elements would have been um, embroideries in, uh, you know, threads in gold or in right. silver because these vestments were really uh, truly richly decorated, richly in terms of many motifs, but richly also in terms of uh, you know, the, the materials uh, used to uh, do the embroideries. And uh, of course, underneath you can see that he's trying to uh, recreate another kind of uh, fabric here with all these little details of uh, lace. Mm -hmm which is quite also... Uh, yeah, it an, seems uh, like, a, like a fine linen or a muslin Exactly, shirt. what it would yeah. have been. While, of course, on the face, you have completely different uh, surfaces. Look at how, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the difference uh, uh, he's able to, uh, differences he's able to achieve in the hair. So long hair here for the uh, little uh, beard. Well, here is just, you know, uh, very, very uh, short hair. Uh, on the uh, on the cheeks, it's quite yeah. astonishing. You find and yourself appreciating the barber's skill. On, yeah, on yeah, exactly. The, the beard. Exactly, and of course, you know what is um, uh, astonishing. I think is also the intensity of this gaze, uh, which is obtained thanks to the representation of the pupil. You see that he's carving out. Uh, this uh, detail that creates, of course, uh, uh, you know, a depression mm. and hence a kind of a strong shadow that gives you the impression that actually the Pope is looking at you. And of course, with all the uh, other uh, parts that he's able to carve as if this was, uh, you know, uh, he's able to recreate the bones on the forehead. And then, of course, look at how here, because the poop was, of course, a little bit, you know, old. Look at how, you know, the skin here is falling on the, um, on the, uh, the eye. So very, very naturalistic. Mm. Um, you find yourself wanting to really touch it to make sure that it's still stone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, no, quite a... Quite incredible. And of course, you have this kind of very uh, interesting expression. He's, you know, kind of looking to someone, and we've, we don't know if it's a smile or he's, you know, trying to uh, uh, be ironic with this little uh, motion of the mouth. It's truly uh, a part of the expression mm. that is, uh, you know, here uh, expressed in, the, in this fantastic uh, face. Now, the, the particular treatment of the eyes, I know I associate it with, 
with Bernini is is this particular to him at this time period or we, are some of his contemporaries doing the same? We had other artists also uh, um, carving details of the different elements of uh, the eyes but let's say that uh, Bernini um, does it in such a skillful way yeah. that is really uh, having his marbles looking at us, let's say. And uh, very often there is an expression we're using for Bernini, which is speaking likeness. Mm. But because you always feel feels that these, uh, uh, these uh, portraits will start speaking to you because oh, they, yeah. they, they are so lively, thanks to the expression he would give to the mouths and to the, uh, to the uh, eyes. Well, he seems to have such, such an attention to light and shadow, the, to, to just all of the, the possible ways that light could activate the surface. No, exactly. And you have that, this example, for instance, in something which is completely decorative, so forget about expression, which is here, the uh, huge brooch uh, mm. closing uh, the two parts of this uh, big uh, cope. And look at all the different uh, uh, elements. You have some shells here. You have a little ribbon here. So, and here would have been a crystal. So he's trying to recreate these effects in only one color color white and one uh, material being uh, marble. You can see, of course, how he, he was able you know, to create a very strong piercing in the stone. Look at this hole, for instance. Mm. And mm -hmm. even here, that's a hole. And right. you can see actually the light coming on the other part on the, uh, on the shell. So it's quite, uh, and you know, for, for sure, he used you know, very um, thin drills to obtain all these uh, holes. And of course, the light plays, uh, you know, with these uh, holes, and it's how this uh, brooch becomes so impressive in the middle in the, of a composition. Mm. And the depth he's able to create, uh, you know, of course, in the head, in the brooch, look at how, anyway, even when uh, Bernini doesn't have depth, he's able to create something that moves in the space. Because if we uh, turn our attention back to the figures of saints, it's what we call very low relief. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just very, very thin. And although it's very thin, look at how you get anyway, thanks to these two legs, the, the feeling that this figure is uh, walking. Look at anyway, the, uh, you feel the thickness of uh, his beard here. Mm -hmm. So that's quite uh, also uh, astonishing that in one single artwork, you get more than one art piece because you have actually two uh, masterpieces of art in relief in these two figures of St. Peter's and St. Paul. You have one masterpiece of decorative element with the brooch, and you have, of course, a masterpiece of portraiture in this uh, very compelling uh, face of the Pope. And this is not sufficient for Bernini, even in uh, planning the circle of his bust is very uh, uh, careful. He decides first to carve everything out of one single block of marble. The circle is part of the same block of stone. It's oh, wow. not a different part of stone. And look at, unfortunately, here at the Getty, there is the risk of earthquakes. So we, these are mounds to secure right. the artwork on the pedestal, of course. But look at how um, you know, um, delicate is the uh, profile of this uh, pedestal mm. with a little bit of a depression here. It's really so this refined. kind of detail that, you know, uh, is refined in every, every part of this uh, masterpiece. And one last thing I would love to insist on is, so of course you have to imagine that uh, Bernini is still very young. As I told you, uh, he is you know, following a tradition using this kind of composition with this uh, mantle. In the uh, far future, in his career, he won't use this kind of mantle because it's too heavy and, you know, you all have in mind the very baroque compositions of Bernini right. that are created a little bit uh, later. He always wants his bodies uh, to move. Right. And he will use, uh, he will use uh, another, uh, another kind of uh, vestment, which is uh, the mozzetta. But here is anyway trying to uh, convey the sense of a body in movement underneath the mantle. And you need to realize that in looking at this area, look at how there oh, is this kind yeah. of wave here. Well, just because just this detail, if you look carefully, gives you the feeling that here underneath the mantle, there's a shoulder, 
that mm. has moved because actually right. the Pope is lightly turning his head on his right and and of course consequently the opposite shoulder on the left has right. moved a little bit and that's created this fantastic undulation of the mm. uh, mantle. So it's how uh, even in a very let's say symmetrical uh, composition uh, with this uh, let's say, thick, heavy mantle that Bernini had to represent in marble is anyway able to give uh, this feeling of uh, movement and of lightness, which is quite astonishing, I think. Yeah, yeah.